The dining in, dining out, represents the most formal aspect of Air Force social life. The origin of the military custom may reach back even before the Romans, when armies would celebrate battlefield victories with a feast. The tradition as we know it today is rooted in England, where feasts were practiced in the monasteries, then spread to the military when the officer's mess was established. British soldiers brought the practice to colonial America, and it was borrowed by George Washington's Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. The dining out format, where guests are invited, started in the U.S. Army Air Corps with General Hap Arnold and increased in popularity during the Air Corps Association with the British in World War II. Today, dining in, dining out in the Air Force celebrates tradition, enhances morale, and pays tribute to unit achievement and Air Force warriors. What follows are the major parts of an actual dining out ceremony from the social hour to the grog bowl. Thank you. Lieutenant Pitts will give the invocation. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless us, give us strength as we walk the path that you have set before us. Give us the endurance to see it through. Give us the humility and recognition that we are in reliance upon you always. We ask your blessing upon all who are gathered here today. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless this meal Bless our friends. Bless us, O oh God. Be with us. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Pettis.
the United States Air Force Commissioned Officer Training Class 0604 and Basic Officer Training Class 0605 Student Mess is called to order. Some formal toasting is now appropriate. You can find the appropriate toast responses in your program. Please charge your glasses. I propose a toast to the flag of the United States of America. To the flag. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the Commander in Chief. To the Commander. Mr. President, point of order. Mr. President, point of order. The President recognizes First Lieutenant Miller. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force. To the Chief. Mr. President, point of order. The President recognizes Lieutenant Colonel Downstead. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the Commander, Air Education and Training Command. Yeah. Mr. President, point of order. The President recognizes Lieutenant Colonel Morris. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to our sister services, the Army, Marines, Navy, and Coast Guard. Yeah. The President recognizes Captain Powell. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the guests, friends, and family of Lot Class 0604, Lot Class 0605. Yeah. Please be seated. Permit me to extend a hearty welcome and a sincere thanks for your attendance at our dining out. I'm OT Major Jeffrey Allen, the president of the mess for this evening. We're honored to have you share this very special event with us. I have the pleasure this evening of introducing the distinguished members at the head table. Please stand and be recognized when I introduce you. Our guest speaker, the deputy director, director of operational capability, Requirements, Deputy Chief of Staff for Air, Space, and Information Operations, Plans and Requirements, Headquarters, United States Air Force, Washington, D.C., Brigadier General Andrew Dicker. Doctrine, Research, and Education, Colonel Stephen Carey and his son Clark. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I invite your attention to the table at center stage. There is a group that cannot be with us tonight, for they have answered our nation's highest calling and have yet to return from the field of battle. This table is smaller than the others, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against their oppressors. The white tablecloth represents the purity of their response to our country's call to arms. The table is round to show that our concern for them is never ending. The single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who have and continue to keep the faith. The hats from the four services depict an unknown face representing no specific soldier Marine, sailor, or airman. But all who are not here with us, the ribbon prominently displayed on the vase is reminiscent of the yellow ribbon worn on the lapel and on the breast of the thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of our missing. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. There is salt upon the plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. Finally, their glasses are turned upside down, reminding us that our distinguished comrades cannot be with us to drink a toast or join in the festivities of the evening. The President recognizes First Lieutenant Miller. Mr. President, I'd like to propose to us, uh, in honor of former prisoners of war, and so silent and will be made in honor. The most of our conglomerates were fallen from the skies, and gently caught by God's own hand, brought them all high. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce Colonel David Gerber. support and presence to celebrate this graduation and inaugurate the OTS Heritage Program. A special welcome also to all of the Ravens and all those who are special guests and alumni and to the friends and families of Basic Officer Training and Commissioned Officer Training Classes 05 and 04 respectively, as well as their Senior Officer Guests, Colonel Bird, Colonel Gibbler, Colonels Donna and James Rose, and Colonel Mike Ainscoe. Our country is at war, and I welcome you, our newest warriors and leaders, into the officer corps, the most powerful military force in the history of mankind. You've come a long way since your decision to serve 
and since you all stepped across the blue line on training day one. You've proven your fitness and your preparedness to take on the future responsibilities during our entire program, but especially during the capstone ADF exercises last week and this week, and your stunning performance during the joint military athletic competition. All I can say is I'm glad that uh, we're going to be on the same side in combat, and I think I speak for the uh, head table right now in saying that uh, we would gladly trade places with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. To the mess. 